There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about how transuranic elements are produced. Remember, a transuranic element was just anything with the atomic number greater than uranium, so greater than 80, 92. 92. And in this video, we're going to cover the next top one, which says describe how commercial radioisotopes are produced. So in this case, we're going over commercial radioisotopes. And the difference between commercial and transuranic was many of the transuranic we can't really use for anything because they decay really fast. But these commercial ones have a longer half-life, so they can stay around for a bit longer as well. So we have to describe how they're produced. But before I start, I'm going to go over that word radioisotopes again and what exactly that means. So radioisotopes, there's two parts to the word. Radio, which is, means kind of radioactive, and isotope. I'll go over what an isotope was again first. An isotope was anything that has the same number of protons, so the element of the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. And we use the example of carbon. So these are all different isotopes of carbon. We've got carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. They all have this, so the 6 here is all the atomic number, so that's the same, same number of protons. All have 6 protons but then they have different number of neutrons. So carbon-12 has 6 neutrons, carbon-13 has 7 neutrons, and carbon-14 has 8 neutrons. So these were all isotopes. And what a radioactive isotope is, is an isotope, so a different number of neutrons, but that will decay. So it will decay over time because it's unstable. Now the reason they're so um, unstable is any radioisotope is unstable, it, it will decay over time. And there might be a couple of reasons why they might be unstable. First of all, if it's too big. So if it's too big, which means it has atomic number, so that Z, Z stands for atomic number, or the amount of protons it has. If it has an atomic number of great, greater than 83, so greater than 83, it's always going to be um, unstable and it will decay over time. Also, if it has a, if it's less than 83, but it has a less than ideal proton, so P for proton and N for neutron ratio, then it's also going to be unstable. So for example, anything which has the atomic number, again, that Z stands for the atomic number, of less, this means less, less than 21, then its ratio, ideal ratio is one to one. So one proton for every neutron in its nucleus. This would be stable. If it has too little or too much in terms of the ratio, it could become unstable. Um, now, when it comes to anything which is bigger, so this is more, and this means equal to or less. Anything with an atomic number of greater than 20 and less than 84, all it has to have an atomic ratio or a proton to neutron ratio of one for every one proton should have 1.5 neutrons. So one proton for every 1.5 neutrons and this will be stable. So if they're greater, if they're a bit bigger, they have to have a big, bigger ratio. Um, and then we said here, for example, the, this one, the 14 carbon, because this ratio is not ideal, this is a radioisotope. So that's a quick cover of, of what a radioisotope was again. And now we're going to cover how they are produced commercially. So first I'm going to cover two examples, cobalt 60 and tenatium 99. Now, what cobalt-60 actually gets used for is we've got cobalt-60, here, which is the radioisotope, and it will decay. So this arrow means decay, and it produces a stable nickel, iron, or element, and in the process, it produces these gamma radiations, so it's gamma radiation. And this gamma radiation is used to check metals for flaws. I'm going to explain that much more in detail in the next videos. But um, cobalt-60 is, is a commercially used radioisotope. And its function is because it emits these wide radiations, the gamma radiations. We can use it to check flaws in metals. And then we've got technetium-99, which was used as a commercial. So not this was, this was used as a medical, medical radioisotope. And it was used to check for tumors and other problems, so tumors and other medical problems in human beings. So these two will be ones I cover in terms of how they get produced. But I'll cover them much more in terms of their uses and why they get used for these different uses in the next couple of videos. 
So for Cobalt 60, what we have, we have a stable. So this is the stable one. 59, it's atomic, 59 cobalt, so atomic mass of 59, this is stable. What we do is we have a neutron bombardment, so this is a neutron, and we shoot this neutron into the cobalt. It absorbs this here, you can see that it goes from 59 plus 1 to 60, and now it's unstable. So this is unstable, so it will decay over time, and when it decays, this again this is the unstable version, when it decays, it will produce beta radiation. This is beta radiation. And remember, beta radiation was if we convert a neutron into a proton. It's got the same atomic mass number, because atomic mass number is neutrons plus protons. But it's changed one of its neutrons. It has 27 protons here and 28 protons here. It's gained one proton. The reason why is because it changed one neutron into a proton because of beta radiation. But with better radiation, it also produces gamma radiation. And that was what was used to check metals for flaws. And all this happens in a nuclear reactor, so it's produced in a nuclear reactor. I'm going to go over that in a second as well. But with cobalt-60, we use neutron bombardment to produce cobalt-60. Tachnetium-99. We have, this is a complicated word to say, molybdenum or molybdenum 98. This here is the stable version, so at the moment there's nothing wrong with it, it won't decay by itself. It's stable. But then we shoot again, we bombard it with a neutron. This is neutron bombardment, so this is the neutron. It will grab that extra neutron and incorporate it into its element. Now it's unstable. It's molybdenum 99 which is unstable, and that will also decay. Just like the co cobalt, this will decay. So here we've got the unstable version, and it will decay. It will decay and produce technetium-99. So this is here. It's actually still unstable. Slightly less unstable, but still unstable. So, so technetium-99 is still a radioisotope. And this radioisotope will then be used to scan for, for tumors. Scan for tumors. Now, when it comes to this decay, they actually store it. They store it for a while before it decays. They store it in something called a nuclear kit. And when they need it, they'll open it and allow it to decay into technetium 99. And they have to use the te technetium 99 within six hours, or a very short time, because it has a half-life of six hours. Which means that within six hours, half of the technetium 99 has decayed. So it has to be used, once it's produced, it has to be used quite quickly. So these were two examples of, of radioisotopes that were used commercially, and they are produced by neutron bombardment. But the thing that when it comes to any commercial radioisotopes, and uh, the thing that you need to know about them as well is they're often produced in nuclear reactors. So for example, here you've got two pictures. These are both the same nuclear reactor in Australia. And this nuclear reactor is a very famous one. And it's get, it is uh, used for medical purposes mainly, but it's used to produce radioisotopes that are used for medical or, or commercial reasons. So this does not produce more energy that much, but more radioisotopes, which are used commercially. And this is in Australia. Um, so also when it comes to radioisotopes that are used commercially, they usually have atomic number. So this is the number of protons. Remember, atomic number is the number of protons of below 84. Because remember, if anything above 84, we said it's too big, which means it will decay really fast. So if it's below 84, it means it has a usually a longer half-life, which means we have some time to use it. From the last video, I said that anything which has a um, atomic number of greater than 100 would actually decay within a couple of split seconds, which means we wouldn't be able to use that commercially. Whereas if we use, for example, a technetium-99 or cobalt-60, it has a longer half-life, which means we can actually use it before it decays. So most of the radioisotopes that we use commercially have a lower um, atomic number than 84. 
to make sure that we can actually hold it on for it long enough for it to be used. Now these are a couple of the ways that get they, they are produced. We said neutron bombardment. These were, for example, cobalt 60 plus technetium 99. These were the ways that these two get produced. But we can also have we also have um, proton bombardment. That's using a proton instead of a neutron, and that produces iodine 123, which is also a radioisotope used in medical reasons or for medical purposes. And then we also often sometimes use alpha particle bombardment and that was just a helium so that was a helium particle which is bombarded into something to produce more um, commercially use useful radioisotopes and so when it comes to this um, describe how commercial radioisotopes are produced you don't need to know the all the equations I showed you earlier it, it might be useful to, to know but overall the main thing you need to know is that they often produce these nuclear reactors with um, reactions or with processes like neutron bombardment, proton bombardment, and alpha particle bombardment, where you have a stable um, particle that is becomes unstable, and then it's stored for long enough for it to be used in medical or commercial purposes. And one of the reasons why it can be used in medical and commercial purposes is it has an atomic number of less than 84, which means it has longer shelf life and won't decay within a couple of split seconds like some of the transuranic elements would. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.